Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Kill 10 Rats. Welcome back to Sunless Sea. Captain Rutherford, I am happy to report, is still alive. We have survived yet another expedition and now it's time to reap our rewards. We've already delivered our Sphinx Stone and we shall pop over to the Admiralty to get rid of our port reports. I think we've been to the Mo Island before, so there's no real new text there. We are getting our fuel reward, etc. Vendor bite, also nothing spectacular. Wither is new. I refuse to ask any questions. I don't want to give them the satisfaction. Okay, seems like the Dark Spectacle Admiral is not too fond of Wither. Nuncio, ah yes, the place that lures away postmen. One hears no end of complaints from the postal service. Oh, so they're actually congregating there. <laughs> hmm, 30 echoes. Oh, that's not too bad. Chapel of Light. Let lights. There's something about the Untersee that breeds heresy and dissent. I rather think we might need to send the Bishop of Southwark out for a good bit of Christian shouting. <laughs> uh, not too bad. 20 echoes. We are back over a thousand. Um, Codex. Exiled for giving answers. That's wither for you. Anything new? Ah, okay. So Codex is consisting of former wither rights from what I can garner here. Oh, these are always fun. Come on, let's hear it. Khan's Shadow. Report submitted. Other officials gather round to hear your tales of bloodshed and debauchery and the jokes about the Khan that the Shadow produces so efficiently and so entertainingly. The one about the Khan and the donkey produces a roar of patriotic laughter and encourages the deputy recorder to unlock the department, the departmental drinks cabinet. You've lost five terror. Again, we have seven favor now. 30 echo and one fuel. Let's bang up, back up to eight. This is actually quite profitable in, in total. And the salt lines, of course. We've done that already. Mm, let's talk to him. Maybe we have something for him. Not in so many words. Anything else you need? Nothing really. Uh, we don't want fuel. We want the paper. Hopefully they'll give us some more uh, supplies. Oh no. Oh, there's a new text. The Echo Bazaar, that enigmatic marketplace, has increased its tax on love stories. The traitor empress has forbidden singing in the street outside her palace. The anarchists of the Calendar Council have inexplicably dynamited a drinking fountain. The Ministry of Public Decency has located and destroyed a nest of gall blighter wasps. Okay. We have now a bit of recent news again. We don't want to buy the townhouse. We may want to see if we have anything here. Hmm. I think I want to hang on to the sea story because sometimes they seem to be required to push some events forward, but I will get rid of the memory of distant shores. So we'll get 10 echoes and our favors are increasing. It's the same old text again. And other than that, can we go out on the town, hire more crew? I don't think we want to. We don't have a new recruit, so we will Oh, we don't have a, a free evening. But our terror is appreciably low. Mm, anything we can sell? Not really, I don't think. Sintelac, but we wanna... Oh, the frickin' of prisoner's honey. Yeah, let's sell that. And that's about it. We have nine fuel. Let's bump that up to 16. And we need more supplies. Ah, so we did come away with a bit of a loss in total, I think. Hmm. But not tremendously. So I think we should be fine. Right. Now, do we have anyone to talk to to get our secrets converted. I don't think we've talked to the tireless engineer yet. We can increase our veils and invite him to dine with us. Mm. 
I don't think so. Can we increase our veils? Let's do that. We've six secrets. Okay. I don't think we've we've, we've spoken. Oh, oh no. Uh, a sign. And oh, we can't speak to the musket. Or we can speak to the ferret. All right. So he's a silent one. Hmm. So the only one with a personal quest seems to be him. Unless we can invite her to dine, but we don't have a searing enigma. Uh, at last, salt song. Interesting. Uh huh. So she's somehow connected to salt. Hmm. Oh well. Let's not spend any more time in port. I want to head out for an exploratory run farther south this time. So we have been way up north. Now it's time to head on way down south just to see what's there. And then maybe, you know, get our return journey sorted out in a bit of an arc. So maybe we can even swing ground back by the salt lines again and do our trading run of uh, swing stone. That would be rather neat because that seems to be a very nice profit margin still for us. Oh, I have run into a light. Oh god, I forgot to repair. Ah, uh, this is, this should not be how it ends, so apologies for that. I'm gonna make a quick run back and hopefully be able to use the Admiralty's favor to get our ship repaired. Wonder if there's actually a limit to how much favor you can in total garner with the Admiralty. And if there's like a point where it is no longer wise to uh, to actually use it to repair. Right, dry dock and we use a favor and it's back up to repaired status. Let's just get one more unit of fuel from her and buzz off again. Yeah, that wasn't great. <laughs> but yeah, run south, um, hopefully to get some more unknown ports to visit, maybe find some what am I actually lacking? We're lacking a gunnery officer. Maybe you will, maybe we'll find a, an officer in some foreign port. That would be rather lovely. Because uh, I also maybe want a new uh, surgeon because the plausible surgeon is just a bit of a an odd one. I'm not sure I want to keep him around. On the other hand, he does have that quest of his, so... Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, come on. You bastard. Mmm, I hate fighting these. Okay. Mm. I don't want to overdo it with the uh, running away. A straightforward challenge. Let's dissect it. We've gained a fragment. You're set to work with your knives and acids. And it is an undistinguished adolescent specimen. A megalops of one of the deep sea crab species. But its eyes, normally vestigial in these troglodytic beasts, are large and rather beautiful. The golden glow is almost gone now, although sparks leap now and then to your knife. With a forlorn wailing cry, the me megalops turns on its back, legs neatly folded as bluish blood gouts from its wounds. Hmm. Uh, that's unfortunate. Let's try not to kill any others. Oh yeah, this is... Meh. Taking some damage unnecessarily, but they're really, I don't know, I wouldn't say hard to dodge, but I find their their movements a little unpredictable so far, since they seem to be able to turn 
onto you until the very last moment. Uh, oh, we have the hilltop. Wasn't that something we failed earlier? Yeah, let's let's do that. Or else, yeah, let's do that. We'll visit the hilltop. Toasting the wind. You stand on a cliff top, looking over the little village. Smoke from the chimney and the cock and magpie drifts straight upwards. As you watch, the smoke tilts. The sudden wind thins and thins it to a pencil smudge, then nothing. The wind screams unexpectedly, like a god cut in half. What a noise! It must be the caves around the island, channeling the air. At least that's the most comforting explanation. Below you, the locals each take nips from a shared flask and make a toast toward the mainland. The wind is southerly. We've gained two terror, and we've gained 13 fragment. All right. Chat to the fisherman. I think this is how we get a port report. Yes, we do. And do we have drinks? 20. I don't think we've done this before. Cider and cave dory. The trees of the Neath are scraggly and wretched, scraping a living with parasynthesis. But the apples of Mutton Island are tart powerful, perfect for cider. Cider? Cider! This stuff is stronger than it looks. You stretch out in your seat, stare through the leaded window at your safely moored ship and find yourself whistling. The landlord gives you a friendly grin and goes back to wetting his cleaver. We've lost one terror. Well, that's a bit of an expensive way to lose one meagerly terror, but you never know when it comes in handy. Right. So we have some landmass there as well. I wonder we go down here first and then up there. Yeah, I think so. I think we'll do that. That Iron Republic though is a strange place. Even the Admiralty seem to <laughs> acknowledge that weird things happen there. Then we hand in like a an empty report sheet even though we we thought we had filled one out. Uh, it's a bizarre, bizarre occurrence. I actually wonder if we can uh, pass these, these, uh, what do you call them, like these gates here at some point, but I guess we'll, we'll have to meet the prerequisites to get to the surface. That should be a while. It's probably a bad idea to do that in our current state. Even if we had the um, permission to do it or the resources to do it. I don't think we'd last long up there. I wasn't really um, aware of, of the timeline of how long London had been fallen. And it seems it's around 30 years. So the game actually tells you this at the very start, but I was so overwhelmed with everything that I didn't really pay attention, unfortunately. So, let us listen to surface Oh, fulfill your admiral. Oh, we have a commission. Oh, right. Row out and meet a contact at the foot of the Albertine Gates. The password is the Empire Remembers. My son is home. The North Remembers. In the shadow of the gates, a deeply tanned vagabond waits in a jolly boat. His clothes are ragged and his face is filthy, but his voice and manners are educated. His message is a string of numbers and the names of seven towns in Essex, Shropshire, Crumbria. He insists that you repeat it back to him three times. He will not allow you to commit it to paper. You now have one strategic information. Very nice. And we'll listen for surface gossip. And we've gained a vision of the surface. This would be a prime spot for a pub or wine shop, but the interest of the Echo Bazaar and the laws of London prevent it. They don't like competition. Still, there are temporary half-legal hostelries and long wood ships. Here you trade stories with suntan surface sailors, stories of Paris and Batavia, the Lost Fires and the Final Isles. Ah, okay. And we'll compile a quick port report. And then... Ah, uh, well, we're fine, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be on our way. Just half hoping to find some new options here, but I guess the the strategic information gathering was actually exactly that. Have we? Hmm. 
Maybe we should should make, take a quick stab at that area there, that area of darkness. Unless, of course, there is a Malmstrom in the middle of that that I forgot about. But uh, no, we've never been there, so yeah, let's see. Hmm. Yes, time to go into unknown territory. This seems fine. I'm actually surprised how how far we managed to to drive that down again, seeing how uh, how dire straits we were in the past uh, few journeys that we had it almost up to eighty. Ah, a reef. Oh, we've just covered it. Hmm. The Afrox Channel. This looks like something out of Silithus in, <laughs> in World of Warcraft somehow. Um, <laughs> okay. Let's swing around. Oh, there's a monster. That's, uh, these are hopefully something we can avoid running into because I don't think that would end well. No. Restless Nights. Oh, this again. A tough challenge. I guess we can risk it. We gained 10 terror. Wow. Okay, that's... Huh. We succeeded last time, I think. 10 terror. That's not good. But we're at the Iron Republic now. So maybe we can do something there to drive terror down again, considering the... <laughs> <laughs> Considering the atmosphere in the place, I find that highly unlikely, though. Let's watch our ratio here. That seems to be okay for for another few rounds around the bend here. And we'll see what we can do here. The Iron Republic. Listen. Engage an officer, the irrepressible cannoneer. Well, that's handy. For 20? Uh-huh. Sir, are you looking for a gunner? I'm looking for a ship. Here are my references. Here are more references. Here's my design for a whistling shell. Here's my colleague. He'll stay on shore. Here's my hand. Will you take it? Of course we'll take it. Welcome aboard. Oh, this is interesting. Room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. Wait, let me make notes. Paper. That's all for now. Fantastic. And our crew is complete. And he's really good. Plus eight iron. Wow. Can we talk to you? Increase your iron. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Oh my word, we need to, sorry about, there, that's out. Only smoke. Look at the, there, all's well that ends well. In the end, all manner of thing shall be well. We've got five secrets and our iron is now, actually let's, let's bump it up to, to 40. I like it. It's a nice round number. Mm, can invite him to dine. Unlocked with five torpedo components. What the hell? I've had enough to eat. Thank you. I don't eat much, but I'd like to demonstrate some ideas I've had. Can you meet me on the after at, at eight bells? Oh, okay. So we could... I guess we unlock his quest if we invest into supplies and torpedo components. Is that how it works? I don't know. But maybe if we have some spare change, we can do that. Uh, compile a port report. Yes, we'll do that. New passions. I think that's the same text. Yeah, we are wash with nostalgia for hatching of the egg. We, we've seen this before. We have a memory of distant shores and a port report. And a tale of terror. Okay. And we've gained one hearts. Wow. Wow. Fund a tittering artifices project. What do we need for that? Devil bone dice and steel. Tigian Ivory. This place is alarming. <laughs> what do they sell? They sell really cheap fuel. Well, I don't mind if I do. Hmm. Okay. We'll be on our way again. Now with a full 
allotment of crew and we'll head south now I'm wondering if it would make sense to follow the the coastline here as long as it as long as it's possible and just keep sending our seabed out in case we happen upon anything new Grand Geode is a long way to the south okay we're basically heading right for that and that's probably the only thing we'll be getting from our bat now all the time we send it out if that's how it works yeah that's unfortunate or maybe it's just uh, that there's absolutely nothing in between right this is the coastline and we're also all right for terror at the moment hmm we're in a fog bank now and we're almost there oh okay we can <laughs> honk our horn or toot our horn however you want to call it hmm this is one grand geode no kidding is it somewhere we can land though it seems to have a dock Ah, there, I think. No? Let's take a trip around and see if we can actually inch our way into there. Uh, we fed the crew, I think. No? Discovered Zelos Town. You have gained a secret. Oh, nice. Our fragments are piling up through our discoveries. That's lovely side effect of all this exploration and since this seems to be the pretty much the core aspect of the game uh, we should definitely not be neglecting our exploratory duties okay dock a distant song like a mirage a naval base with the royal navy's emblems curiously amended efficient bright-eyed women and men work briskly everywhere you look they are singing hymns with unfamiliar words. Heart-faced royal marines watch you carefully, barring entry to the geode's heart. A plaque by the docks has been defaced with orange paint, but you can still make out the original inscription. Station 5. Adjunct. Ask to speak with someone in authority. What is this place? Compile a port report. Does the Admiralty know or want to know? The marines are watching. Hmm. Ask to speak with someone in authority. A blank space in your memory. You saw the Commodore and then then there was something bright. You discussed matters of importance. You're certain of it. Teasing clues linger in your memory. A sailor asked to stay behind and you permitted it because, because, it'll all come clear later, probably. Oh, we've lost a, a sailor. We have one memory. One memoir, a sunstroke. The light, it's pretty. You've gained 25 terror. What the... And an extraordinary implication. Okay, I'm, I'm somewhat scared now. I'm not purchasing an element of dawn from the Commodore. What does it cost? 50 supplies. That's more than our ship can even carry. And vital intelligence. Do they sell anything? They don't. Okay, the terror is making me rather apprehensive so i think this is the time where we make a, a trip around here and up seeing how we can maybe get to the salt lines and then back to london that was scary but maybe also rather lucrative i think far off very far off someone screams i, f I find that flash of light interesting uh, suddenly reminds me of men in black <laughs> We got uh, we got uh, our memories wiped somehow by the, the sun and everything. That that's curious. Port Carnelian. Wait, aren't aren't you Carnelian? Oh, you're in exile. Maybe we should go there some other time. <laughs> I'm really just I don't want to go south because I really I'm a bit worried about this. Yeah. 
No, I don't think I want to go there, no. Visage is to the northeast. That we can do. Or oh, visage? I don't know. Peter's Rocks. Hmm. I hope Peter doesn't mind that we intrude into his rockery. But I shall be careful not to collide with one. Ah! Again, one of these instances of things being closer than they appear on the map to me somehow. I still... A lot of trouble uh, predicting the, the distances in this game. But hey, all things come with time. Now, there we go. Hide your face, hide all your faces. This is the port of Visage, where faces may not be naked, except one, a stone monument the size of a village church, serenely gazing upwards, flourishing of years. Go ashore, inward and upward. Once you set foot on Visage, you may be here for a little while. Create a port report. You can at least interview those who are leaving. Ah, uh, yes. A departing merchant gives you a confused account of crocodiles and honey cakes and something about ear blockage. To this you add your own impressions about the street layout close to port and the types of commerce here. When the lights are especially bright, it is possible to make out the details of the profile of that great stone face. Well, no shops available. We'll go ashore. Terms. All those who enter must play their parts. The sign is visible only after you've crossed the threshold. Check in at the customs house. One may not wander a visage at will. Okay. A changing room. All visitors must pass, one by one, through a room guarded by a person in the mask of a moon moth. That's all for now. Masks in an assortment of shapes and colors wait. Ask to go about without any mask. Ask the significant of the masks. Choose a frog, a locust, or a bat mask. Ask the significance. Maybe there's more to it than a question of aesthetic. Assorted Pestilences. Moon Moth explains. Each mask declares a different intention towards the denizens of Visage and must be accompanied by suitable behavior. The frog is for visitors who, though perhaps clumsy and unfamiliar with local etiquette, have come in order to observe local ways and make uncouth comments about them. The locust is for those who seek profit in Visage and would carry away as many goods as possible. You prompt about the bat. Moon Moth hesitates. Bat is an ill-omened visitor. Sent as a messenger or a spy. Bat always dies. I think since we're profit-oriented, we choose the locust. Hunger for all things. Moon Moth settles the locust mask over your head. The eye holes are covered with a thin gold film through which valuable objects gleam more brightly. May you find a happy harvest, says Moon Moth. Then, when you have partly turned away, it double knots the ties on its purse as though you're likely to pick its pockets. Doesn't it know you can see it? Occurrence. Okay. On the lower slopes, stone buildings, flat roofs, archways. In the architecture, there lingers a memory of lotus and palm frond. The hill above the face, however, forever looking up at the ceiling of the Untersee. Untersee. I keep parsing this half German, half English somehow. No one inhabits its cheeks or the hollows of its eyes. Hmm, visit the library of parts. So-called because all books are fragmentary, perhaps. Visit the flood court. The moon month speaks as though you should already know what it is. End your performance and leave the island. You can't stay in character forever. Okay. Okay, we need to stay here and do stuff. So we'll do the library first. Stoop at the lintel, enter the dark. A room of heavy stone guarded by a golden statuette of a woman with outstretched arms. The scroll, niches, sorted to correspond to a variety of masks. The jackal and the lioness, the crocodile and the dung beetle. A woman in the mask of a lotus blossom is standing at a lectern, reading in silence. Moonmoth stands to one side as your escort as your escort and tour guide, okay. Steal the most valuable looking scroll for later sale. It's the sort of thing a locust might do. Read over her shoulder, what is that you're studying? Pick the pockets of the readers. Where they aren't looking, you can be acquiring. Well, mmm. We have to do something locusty, so I guess we'll do the least chancy one. But this is the one that would probably, yeah, I think we're, we're going after this because this is more in line with, with our character. 
But and bloom. She appears to be reading poetry. Something about the blossom that falls away beneath the water at night and blooms again in the daytime. She frowns as she reads and goes back over and over the same passage as though committing them to memory. As though it is very important for her to have every syllable by heart. She is too absorbed to notice you there, but the moon moth is not. It does not like to see you interfering and accuses you of being a bat in disguise and casts you out. Oops. Ah, we've succeeded though. Well. Okay, we've been thrown out. That was cut short, so we didn't we didn't properly locust because we were in fact a bat, but we were a bat so clever that we masqueraded as a locust. <laughs> I guess in, in a sense we are more of a spy than, than anything else uh, with all the admiralty work we're doing. Oh, interesting, uh, interesting design here. <laughs> This game never ceases to amaze, befuddle, and uh, the Isle of Cats and just generally entertain. I really can't get enough of doing this. Like I'm, I'm almost uh, shooting my voice here with uh, recording too many episodes. <laughs> it's like this is the one series where I'm recording faster than I'm releasing because, uh, yeah, I'm just really wanting to to see where this game is going not that I don't want to do that with the other uh, with the other games but those I I sort of tend to deliberately slow down a little so I don't get too far ahead of the comments but in this case I just can't bring myself to <laughs> I won't be too far ahead though maybe two or three days in any case Port Cavendish on the Isle of Cats that's maybe threatening for our poor mascot here, but maybe you can just stick around ashore, uh, on, not ashore, rather, on, on, the, on the ship while we go ashore. Where are the roses? A scatter of yellow-lit honey dens and brightly painted alehouses. To the southeast rises the stone tower of Cavendish Abbey, its ramparts hung with crimson and gold banners. There are sailors from all across the Neath hauling cargo, dicing and brawling good-naturedly on the docks. The air carries the sound of sea shanties sung with more enthusiasm than skill and smells, and the smell of roses edged with brimstone. A piratical welcome. Welcome to the Isle of Cats, the wide-eyed dockmaster says brightly. Would you like to bribe me not to write down your details in this nice official ledger? Hmm. Bribing with file, uh, with file, with five echoes. Buy a shipment of red honey. Uh-huh. Gift of glass. I'm damned, I can't touch the truth, take this. That sounds rather scary. Sell sunlight. That most dangerous of pleasures here in Port Cavendish, there is an appetite for dangerous pleasures. Mm -hmm. Sunlight filled mirror catch box. Wow, okay. Oh, so that's what these are for. To go to the surface and catch sunlight maybe? Hmm, I think we've seen those in the shops. So let's do a port report first. Though the Isle seems at present beyond the reach of the Admiralty's laws, that does not mean the Admiralty lack interest in their activities. Roses and Kings. He spent half a day observing the docks and noted an astonishing number and variety of ships. Was that a carnet trimmeran nestled beside a vessel from the Iron Republic? The dock hands complain loudly that they have never been busier. The catties talk ceaselessly and carelessly about smuggling and piracy, but even the most hardened sailors lower their voices when they mention the King. They go even quieter when they talk about the Rose Garden. You make careful notes, perhaps the Admiralty will understand what they mean, even if you don't. Okay, so now let's bribe our man here. Welcome to the Isle of Cats. You hand over the coins and she tips you a sharp smile, oh, not our man, a woman, before waving you to the nearest alehouse. The entire process is straightforwardly corrupt and pleasingly efficient. You now have one menace, suspicion. Oh, you repscallion, this will increase as you conduct criminal activities or have contact with rough swords. Oh, so our Ministry of Public Decency will not like us then. The alehouse's sign is a tiger painted the color of rose petals. Someone has gone to great trouble and expense to gild the creature's eyes. They look out over the port, feral and unseeing. A caged hive of lamplighter bees hangs from the ceiling like a chandelier. A few sailors give you heart-mouthed, assessing looks, but most ignore your presence entirely. 
significant tokens. The Cutties all wear a pair of amber stones threaded around their necks and pinned to their colors. Clandestine doings, the clink of coins, exchange of goods, religious observances. Is that a crimson veiled nun? But what sort of nun would be in a place like this and leave the alehouse? I think of all the things that interest us most, it's probably this. A mellifer's sister, of course, she responds, performing a complicated negotiation between veil thick glove and glass of mushroom wine. You ask what one of those is, and she snorts. I'm glaring at you underneath this blooming veil. You act appropriately coward, and the mellifer's sister thaws a little. We are beekeepers and honey harvesters. The catties owe their prosperity to us, and the pirate king too. She slurps the last of the mushroom wine behind her veil, and the barkeep glides over to her, fill her glass eyes respectfully downcast. Uh-huh. What about the clink of coins and exchange of goods? The merest taste. You turn your head as though you are admiring one of the moldering draperies hung from the wall. A vial flashes in the buyer's trembling hands. He uncorks it, pours a few drops of thick wreck liquid down his throat. The vial drops to the floor. When you look back up, he's gone. You blink and look around. Nobody else seems in the least perturbed that a man disappeared from the midst. You pick up the fallen vial and examine the traces left inside. Sticky honey gleaming with redness entirely unlike blood. Hmm. Okay, what about this? Cat's eyes, one of them says, for the Pirate King. As far as you can gather, the Pirate King's name is Leopold, and he controls all the trade on the island. Half of the catties believe that he can take the form of a crimson tiger and creep into their dreams. The other half suspect more precisely that he simply eats those who displease him. Well, we're out of here. Leave the alehouse. There must be more to the Isle of Cats than drunken sots and sea stories. The laws of land. The barkeep stops you before you reach the door and hands you a brooch set with two amber stones. He waits impassively until you pin it to your clothes. Everybody wears the cat's eyes here, he tells you, moving aside to let you pass. Just a friendly reminder that the Pirate King is watching. It seems that no place, then, is truly lawless. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so we've opened this up a little further. We can't really buy this, but I'm curious about this. A gift of glass. An emaciated man in lion-colored robes clutches your sleeve and wants us to take something. He points to an unpromising looking crate. This may be a horrible idea, but I want to find out what this is about. Life and light. The sun orders time. Do you see? Down here we can only touch time with our fingers. The devil knows that in Irum in Irum. His eyes well with tears. Abruptly he turns and plunges into the crowd. You're left with the crate. You now have one empty mirror catcher box. You've gained one mirror. Oh. Okay. Hmm. I hope they're not illegal, but, you know, in, 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 in any case, we have one now. Maybe they're only illegal if they're not empty. The Honey Tongue. A brothel and honey den, Cavendish Abbey. Let's go to the Abbey. The crimson-clad mellifluous sisters patrol as vampires and tend their hives of lamplighter bees. Uh, what can we do? Fuel for the bee smokers. The sister who tends the smokers is the talkative sort. Unlocked with five fuel. A meeting with the abbess. She's always interested in news. And we have news. Let's meet her. You recite your news to the abbess. Your voice, or abbess, I don't know. Your voice stuttering. There's a lot of words I've only ever seen written down and never heard spoken out. Your voice stuttering every now and then in the cool silence of her office. Her face is entirely obscured by a thick veil and it is impossible to read her reactions. Nonetheless, you must have pleased her. She orders one of her novices to load your ship with casks of mushroom wine. The abbey overlooks the rose garden and so you make a point to linger at the windows. The roses bloom lush and wanton, each petal the color of sunset. A tall woman in golden in a golden veil picks her way between the thorn bushes. Hmm. Oh, we've gained the Pirate King's notice. Well, perhaps not. And we'll be heading out for now. That was rather curious and interesting. Now, the place up north, somewhere we can also land? I'm not sure. What was it? Saint Haven? Saint's Haven? Hmm. Oh, yes, indeed. I'm oh, making quite the lot of discoveries here today. Let's see what this is about.
Oh, this is... I know what this is about, we've been here. It's our... Oh, the Republic Ascendant. The line of the House of Kervi is ended. Rats hold the ten city of the guinea pigs. You are welcome here. Refuel. Most of the wrecked steamer stores are gone, but the rats have torn out. The guts of the stream pin is to make engines that tear coal from the earth. They'll help you resupply. Undergo repairs. Mm. This will repair up to 20. A chat with the chief engineer. Yes, let's do that. We have a port report. And we can maybe undergo repairs. Well, that's fantastic. Tiny engineers envelop your ship in a whirl of Republican enthusiasm. They leave it better than they found it. Yeah. That was brilliant. Our friends the rats are uh, definitely handy and convenient when it comes to keeping our ship afloat. I rather like that. Now, where are our... There's a salt line, so we basically... Oh! Oh, the recurring nightmare is is there again. So we do have a... Um, what was it? Like the restful night? An escape. The, the, the sea churns in your wake. You pull away from the eye into the shallower waters of waking, but a terror clings. You lost one menace's nightmare strength. New total one. You've lost one restful night. And we succeeded and gained two terror. Well... We're slowly getting on top of this. So we have to remember to, to keep the restful night around. And there is our, our big crabby friend. Ooh, and there's also this that I'm not particularly fond of. Oh, what do we have here? Uh, nothing the bat would particularly mention, but not that we're looking for anything more to discover right now. It's just as well. Lick a monkey, Crag. I thank you for the suggestion, but I think I'll pass. Right. Food may be getting a little problematic. I hope we'll make it in time without having to eat our crew, as the tagline to the game so often says we should do. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. We should hopefully be fine. The drive back to London from the Lions isn't as long as uh, as it looks to me right now, I think. Memory serves. We are going to cut it a little close, though. Hmm. There they are. Okay. Should be fine. Right. Hopefully the offer still stands to haul more back for them. Do we actually have the hulls, uh, the, the hold space, though? Since we've got the mushroom wine now. I hope so. Otherwise, maybe we can sell it. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Come on. Zeal port. There we go. And the mist is closing up behind us. Just as well that we're out there. Right. Off we go. Maybe we can reduce our terror here again. That was very nice the last time. Mm, yes, we can. And... We'll visit the Unmakers. Oh, Port Report as well, of course. And we'll visit our Unmakers, and we've lost five terror. That is always rather nice. Those tea cakes really help. Okay, time for our journey back. Might uh, be time eventually to fill almost our entire hold with fuel and food and see if we can make it all the way to the other edge of the map <coughs> of the map but I don't know I'm, I'm not confident enough in our ship and our terror is way too high for that sort of adventure right now I think because the farther out we head the quicker it rises as far as I as I interpret it but yet again that was a rather nice run 
we have a lot to get rid of in port. And hopefully we'll be able to make a decent enough profit of this one this time around, because I think we have some more valuable reports and items this time. Especially that, uh, what was it? We have strategic information, we have the implication that the antiquarian likes. So we should be, should be doing okay. And the music starts up again. That's always nice to come home to. <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, yeah, really, really nice uh, recurring theme there. Very well, we're back in London. Hopefully we'll not get arrested. Her Enduring Majesty's Custom Service are there and we'll hope that they won't find anything and they don't. That is very nice. Our terror is down. Oh, we've gained the nightmare strength again. Mm -hmm. uh, let's check our messages. We've got another day and someone wants to sign on. Really? Well, interesting. Let's ditch our stones. Hopefully it's... Oh. This is new. A smiling woman in an elegant jonquil gown places a gloved hand on your arm. Are you waiting for the ministry men? You, they won't be coming, but I have a proposition for you. Bright gown, bright hair. Her skin glows with health. Her smile is wise and merciless. That stone's full of old memories. The bazaar has been drinking them. She nods at the spires that loom over London, the dark limbs that sprawl through the streets. I have a better destination. Help us bring light here below and we will reward you. Reward you richly. Rich reward. Light. These are happy words. Refuse. Those bright, bright eyes. The unmistakable mark of the dawn machine. None understand the dawn machine, but all fear it. Who knows what its motives are or hers. Um, we're too much of a straight shooter to do this. So we'll refuse. Not an admirer of progress, I see. Well then, keep your stone, keep your memories. None so blind as those who will not rise. A dusty gentleman. Captain, wait. She gave you an errand, didn't she? She serves a certain power, a bright one, but not a friendly one. I have a counter-proposal. Will you listen? Uh, Captain, a moment. You turned her down, didn't you? That was wise. The power? Ah, yeah. Okay. We did turn her down. And hopefully... Tired eyes, sallow skin. He stoops like a clock and cuffs like a miner, but that frock coat is the finest fabric and the newest cut. My name is Penstock. And the bazaar has been feasting on old memories from the salt lions. It only makes her more melancholy, and that's worse for all of us, but especially those who love her. So we found another use for the Sphinx Stone. We can set something right. Accept his commission, take it far away. We'll tell you where you will be paid. Already arranged with the bright eyed sequencer to take it to the Grand Geodes. This will cause you to renege. What? I have what? Oh, if you've already. Hmm. If, right. Oh, that's what that was. That was the Dawn machine down there. It's far away. Well, it'll give us a new destination at least. I'm grateful. Here, he presses a crumpled note into your hand. This is where you should take it. You'll learn something, I think. I had to seek the master's help for this. We will all be enmeshed in their plans, but it's worth it. I swear it's worth it. Deliver the Sphinx Stone to Adam's Way in the south where the replete wait. Mm -hmm. So that was the event I had basically been waiting for. The event that kills this trade for us. <laughs> but at least we have a way to turn this around without compromising our character's integrity here. I look forward to tackling that next time. I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And until then, I wish you well and bye for now.